Hey everybody, I'm Yendi and this is Odyssey with Yendi on Told Journeys, where I speak with some of my favorite people and have some shape-shifting conversations. Here, they share their stories leaving nuggets of goodness and life lessons to motivate and inspire our own life's journeys. Sharing his story from the ghetto to going global and all the growth in between is the poor people's governor, Bounty Killer. Bounty, your name is synonymous with dancehall anywhere in the world, any nook and cranny. When you started doing this thing, you, you, you had a vision that that's where this thing was going to end up? Well, I had a vision to be great, but I didn't know how great I would be. Yeah. But I know I want to be some sort of great. Yeah. So I destined to be great. And then after nearly 30 years, I think I've done some great works and contributions. So um, the signature should be there. I think so too. I might want to agree with that more than some. <laughs> <laughs> Make us start at the very, very beginning because it's always the best place to start, right? Whoa. Where are you born? Where are you grow? What was life like for Bounty as a youth? Or rather, well, for Rodney? As yeah, a as Rodney. Well, I was born in Trench Zone, actually, you know. Really? At Callismith Drive, 11 and a half. Mm -hmm. Hey, Carly Smith Drive. That's what my parents told me because I never grew up in Trench Town, though. Okay. Because shortly after the year 72 that I was born, I understand that my parents moved. Right. And that's when we go to Kalalubed. Okay. That's Kalalubed adjacent mm -hmm. to Riverton mm -hmm. City, Spanish Town Road. Mm -hmm. Kalalubed, the small side, Riverton City, where the dump is at. Mm -hmm. That's the bigger side. I grew up on Kalalubed side, but it's between Kalalubed and Riverton you interact as a kid. Right. So that's where I really grew up and exposed to music from a tender age. Yeah. Cause my father used to have a little system. It, it wasn't a big sound that plays out. Yeah. But back in the days, everybody had something they call a stereo. Yes. Everybody had them component mm -hmm. set. Because mm -hmm. music was so infectious in the country. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to have music in their house. True. So Papa used to buy records and he had a record box. Mm -hmm. And he had a mic and all these things. So I would just grab the mic and say, I mean, I'm Rodney. <laughs> and feel fascinated to hear your voice through the loudspeakers mm -hmm. of the cowboy, you know? Yeah. So that's the first experience of me and a microphone. And then growing up in the ghetto, music playing and music getting in your system. And I always like to make up words and rhyme and drama. But I never intend to be an artist. But the funny thing is, it's almost like it's something that comes so naturally to you. Because you will say, Bounty, tree. And Bounty say, man, not the tree. Because man love for flea. <laughs> like, it comes so Yeah, from my naturally. tender years, I like to rhyme. I have a, a way with words, you know. Yes, so I, I guess I've been good at poetry from a tender age. And drama. And then after started going to street dance because music used to play everywhere them time they didn't have to pay for god dance mm -hmm. people just keep dancing you go and support the bar yeah and street dances used to be everywhere and they never used to have nice abatement i can them something the right. dance used to go from night till morning night again yeah. if the sound bad it all dead every three days straight <laughs> dj a dj from seven o'clock till seven in the morning mm -hmm. So you never have to go anywhere to be exposed to the music. So yeah. that's how I get the musical inspiration from a tender age. And then growing up, uh, my parents was really poor. Yeah. So I never have the best life. Mm. It was rough coming up. Mm. There were several nights I have no dinner, wake up and no breakfast. Mm. My mother used to be a dressmaker. Mm. She make plate sponge, she make pillars. She's a little jack of all trades. She would do different, different little things to put things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. My father used to be a security guard at housing. And my brother started figurey works. Okay. That's how I started to learn to make figurees. So you know how to make them too? Yeah, that was my first wow. little profession, making figurees with my brother. Wow. Till I become good at it and that was my first job. We start to sell figurey and we go all over the country. Montego Bay, Watcher Race, West Milan. We got sleep a market, all these things. We used to downtown around from MPM, just like every eagle. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job that I used to do first then. Yeah. A friend of mine encouraged me to hold the mic one night. Mm. We never really 
plan for DJ, but we was drawing Marine and I was getting all the points and ahead of them. So we go on one dance or one sound named King Drew play and he was a little amateur DJ in the community. So he hold the mic and then everybody has me for hold the mic too. Cause me have a whole heap out. Cause he used to call me Matlock as I used to be very contradictive and I always have to win the points. Matlock. Yeah, I'm a counteractor from a long time. I have mm. that instinct, so they call me Matlock myself every case. <laughs> So they say, like, kids. since you have something about it, you know, so I think, hold the mic. Yeah. <laughs> me never have no lyrics. Me and a DJ, me never have no argument, but it's, it's a case of winning the points. So mm -hmm. you want to go to the, 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 the farthest point you can go. So I just hold the mic out of bossiness. Yeah. Not knowing what to say. And then <laughs> a DJ, me say, me I got DJ. And then when the mic reaches him out, I sing, me and up, I sing. <laughs> Me and up I sing a, a popular junior read song at the time. What you sing, say? Woman make your waistline roll. Hey. Me say, woman make your waistline roll. <laughs> she put one hand in the ear like a TV pole. Hey. She on her belly and her bottom goes a roll. Hey. <laughs> one like a vehicle get out of control. <laughs> -la 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 -la. That Man. was a little popular song that junior read mm -hmm. been singing in the community and yeah. through the mix sound. And everybody likes it. Yeah. And then it just come out of my mouth and then she's a popular knowing song. It gets it's a little forward. reaction. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what else to say, I'm like the mic. <laughs> Cause I get stage fright and end up a singing with a DJ. <laughs> but I like the reaction, you understand? Yeah. And the fact people think I can do something with the mic. So I kind of get to like the idea. So I go, we go build up a little rhyme. Mm -hmm. When I was a youth, I lived down the gully. Mm. I used to wear up and same could I see my body. Enough girl pass and laugh off of me. Enough man pass and criticize me. Or your best friend could I be your worst enemy. Now me grow up to be a Mike MC. Mm. All of them rush me for me DJ money. Mm. And those times when you come up with like a, a eight bars or four good constructive bars is like a song. Uh, not there enough, but it's a whole song. You just do? Yeah, so yeah. It, it become a little anthem in the community. Wow. And you start uh, get a little fan base and thing. But that was over Riverton side. Mm. I come from Colour Right. So because I go to Riverton City you now and I start get this little fan base building up on people kinda liking me. You now you have a real DJ over the name Dirty Dog. Okay. When him feel me I take over him turf. Okay. <laughs> so competition kinda come. Okay. So me have to end up clashing with Dirty Dog and me kill him. Mm -mm. So that was my first dog. encounter of competition <laughs> in a music. Mm -hmm. I was a little amateur and it was a community thing. It wasn't anything like a, a inspiration of being an artist. So right, right. After a while, the struggle and problem and problem and trouble and trial. You know, remember about DJ and you're going back on the hustling and the grind. Car food of eat. Yes, yeah, so I ended up even move from Desano because my father did I make a house a sea view from Oliver Colour bed time work at housing so right. him did get him housing trust and him did get the house a sea view so the house was in the making all this time so we ended up moved to sea view. Mm -hmm. So I leave Riverton City that that's where the music inspiration was really coming. Right. So I got a sea view and nothing about music where I make figure a sea view you now. Mm -hmm. And then music not so popular a sea view as in Riverton. Right. Where you have street dances and right. sound systems. So mm -hmm. we never appear music so much mind. It was when Shabba Rankin burst now. Mm -hmm. And then Shabba Rankin started to come visit his mother in Seaview Gardens. Because he says a very different yeah, lifestyle then, from what you live in currently. Yeah, so we also found we in a poverty. And then now we see Miss Christie's son come do it now. Mm -hmm. Come be the Shabba Rankin. Mm -hmm. So that inspired us to say, yo, you can do it. Yeah. Because the Shabba that from down the road, Rexton, Miss Christie's son. So we have the spark, you know, we know. And then now in a Seaview, some of the youths them know if I'm Riverton when me used to DJ, so they always say, Why well, you know I hold the mic, you know I DJ no more. Ray Ray and me always not make up little lyrics and rhymes when I make figure, but you know I hold the mic, you're not singing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All them time then a few DJs really make it big. Right. It wasn't like being a DJ you're gonna be big and rich. I just few DJ did really make it successful. So right. you can't really go and go tell your parents you wanna become a DJ because mm -hmm. That, that not, not look like affirmative mm -hmm. choice, you know, so. Mm -hmm. I never really choose to be a DJ. I mean, I make me figure until I did a rhyme up, rhyme up, until you have a youth named Crack Skull. Mm-hmm. Well, him have a stereo down him house where him, him make up little dub plates for the sound system in the community. We just 
sing dub plate and go give people. People don't ask you for no dub. Mm -hmm. But you just take it as a promotion and right, package. So you can get your thing out there. If you give a man a free dub and yeah. he play it, it can benefit you. Right. So we build up that little interest where we start to just do dub plates and go give sound system. Mm -hmm. And then if them sound good, then we end up get played. Aye. So we end up start do some dub plates to the community sounds and them start get played and little popularity are building in the community and then we start to do it for other little systems out of the community. Then we start a little thing named All Star Friday where we string up this little, little stereo and we just go out there go DJ and go exercise the talent. Just go out there go sing all night. Mm -hmm. So till one night, it happens to be Shabarankin coming in and saw us out there singing and ah. we don't know where we end up making him stop but him stop and hold the mic mm -hmm. and sing a few songs and then the whole community has a shabba around there sing and everybody, everybody come, out. come out now and crowd and we get a nice audience so everybody I expect shabba to sing and next night because we do it every Friday so every right. Friday people I expect shabba would come again shabba would come again so it end up getting an audience so we start have a little crew coming Aye. now and other DJs start coming and mm -hmm. work out now so it become a little weekly event in the community, a mature thing where we go work out. And then, one night now, it turned it, it turn competition again. I youth named Goldust. Me and him end up going at it. And you mash him up again now? No. You lie. He end up mashing me up this no. time. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you yes, Another that's dog. Right, yeah, so Jeez. he was a more professional artist than me. Me's an artist with just a learned skills. He was a more. All man and me and him know the game. Him, him sing out a road pan real sound system. Me is amateur where only sing in a community. Mm -hmm. So him done you? Yes, yeah, so him done me. Mm -hmm. And get the better half of me and then everybody <laughs> will laugh half of you because you, know, you lose the clash and things. So you feel down. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it was boom down the mic now. If I'm scared him crew, my virgin mm -hmm. has another more senior artist than me mm -hmm. who in the game and been to recording studio, recorded song and no both studio flex and be an amateur thing. Right. So he might tell say, well, I don't know nothing to you, man. A simple thing, this is just a little exercise, rare, rare community vibes. You don't take it so much, you know, like I something you lost. You right. don't really lost. Yeah. You understand? So he must say a studio man for go man, a record man for go record song and boss big like Shaba and Ray 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 and Motivational speech mm -hmm. in a your down moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then now we never really take it as nothing like a joke. Because we have done the mind as a man where they are either you in the game. So if so he must tell say, you that yeah, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Yeah. So me follow the encouragement and start go studio. Mad. So we start got jamming studio. Mm -hmm. And start learn the ropes and start make inquiry and try to get on the audition because them time you have to do audition before you get mm -hmm. to the producer. When you when you did find your sound, the sound that make you bounty, you always had that sound or is when now you start your audition and go in studio you start find the thing that make you unique? Well I always have a deep tone of voice. Yeah. My sound really develop grown Ninja Man and Shabba Rankin. Yeah. Me look, me say Ninja Man on the eye picture and Shabba Rankin <laughs> with a deep tone. Uh -huh. I'm not going to a circus. So it, mm -hmm. it was Shabba mm -hmm. Rankin and Ninja Man was my two favorite DJ at the time. Aye, got you. So some of my song was influenced by Ninja, some influenced by Shabba. So mm -hmm. when you hear him a DJ, you hear a little Ninja, you hear a little Shabba. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you used to DJ and people think of Ninja, sometimes you used to DJ and people think of Shabba. Until I realized that. So I realized I have to tone my sound in a way that this thing for people know me. Mm -hmm. But it was the influence of Shabba Rankin and Ninja Man really create this bounty mm -hmm. killer sound. Mm -hmm. So it emulate those two and mm -hmm. create this sound. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have the high pitch and the deep tone. Mm -hmm. So when you go audition now, and Jamis So when say, I go yeah. to audition now, I never get on Jamis audition because Jamis now was the boss producer in mm -hmm. the late 90s and then yeah, everybody from country and town come and I choose the audition, so it's a long line. Mm -hmm. And then it was a big con con competition to get on the audition. So we never end up getting on Jamie's audition, but you have his brother, Uncle T, mm -hmm. who is another producer, and he has an audition 
audition should say. Cause I always say audition for audition. You're good man. <laughs> Are so you on name a Saturday, name, you know? <laughs> it was Uncle T's audition. Uh -huh. So I end up <laughs> get an Uncle T audition and then I pass to get in the studio. Right. And him say, yeah, man, him sound good, man, him bad. Mm -hmm. And then when I start to record now, me I record a song named Wash Me Go Now Rinse It Nine Blood. And then the man where I do it, I said, no, you, them tune they too. Hardcore. Oh, can't deal with them tune. Mm -hmm. Uncle T want nice tune and rare. And <laughs> me I say, all right, you see the gun nail. A long time it fed on, because if you love you like me, friend, you would have put down the gun. How the gun, you know? Make so much man sing get bun. Them tiny baby when I run the place. So every mm -hmm. man have a style of a baby when style. Because so it used to go in you know, them mm -hmm. tiny the DJ hat. Yeah, I have a style of a film style. <laughs> yeah. Cause so it used to go a pirate thing used to run the place. Man sound like man. You understand? Yeah. Like, 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 no, if it sound like a man, I'm on the back. Same time they have 10 bujo, 5 bunty, 15 <laughs> beanie, 10 spragger. So, but it was just music and fun. Yeah. So anyway, the man said, yeah, man, I them tune the Uncle T1. They go, need for done and rare. Right, right. mm -hmm. And they gun tune. So anyway, I'm a vice that tune there. I'm a vice and the other one say, them they pay him and send him back from foreign. You know him one shot up jumper and him Patrick you win. Me say them they pay him and send him back from foreign. That can make up of a budget deporty. Mm -hmm. Them time they can't tell you any song that you have ever sang like it. Yeah. So <laughs> boom bang, vice them two tune. They know Uncle T come. Mm -hmm. And I say yeah man, sound good, bad youth. Ray, 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 see you no more. I mean, I say, yeah, man, my advice one said, watch me go down, rinse. And the brother said, man, I said, we have time about, man, a bad tune and take out him little slogan. <laughs> <laughs> so go around the youth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get even, I got vice, watch me go no one. Mm -hmm. Vice one more named Maglin, one girl tune, some advice. Four tune for Uncle T, the first time that I record. Jeez, um, four tune, you know? That's the first time I record at oh, Jammies. Because the first time I ever recorded. What do you mean, business, you know? Yeah, because them time they all produce a vice artist and the vice one tune, them one mm -hmm. album. Mm -hmm. So when them book an artist a vice, them say, vice out your belly. Mm -hmm. You understand? So mm -hmm. every producer used to put out album with artists and they like, no, a man just want to want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and from your band, them want your vice whole heap mm -hmm. of tune. So I start work as Uncle T artist now every week with a vice. Man, those gear ready my advice. Tune even not go come out now. Master your craft. Them have no release date, but that's all you used to work. Are you producer this? Yeah. So him does gear ready my just go on vice, and then we choose which song we put out when. Right. So me end up a record for Uncle T. That's how me get in a jam is now, and me depend Uncle T Rasta. So me get the privilege to can go into the studio and interact with other artists and producers and engineers. So me get for no engineers or him names or area and secretary and security and get familiar with people in other places. So mm -hmm. things not so difficult like before. Right. Yeah, so that's how me get in now and start money time away and it was an engineer named Printer. Mm. A younger youth, you know, we had yeah. him a similar age group and he was the one who started look out for we a certain way, you know, when certain sound man come I said look you your body now. Mm. Hear him and on. How old were you around bro. this time now? It's about 21, 22. So you're still young. Uh, yeah, early mm -hmm. 20s, just come out of teens and Uncle T and Jammies. Them time the Jammies don't know about me. It's right. when we start record for Jammies, Jammies get for discover me. Because mm -hmm. we never get introduced to Jammies. It's when we come up with that show name Dub for Dub. Mm -hmm. Dub for Dub start, make a little wave now. Because Sky Juice go play it and Kill sound and <laughs> them time it don't have to be a hit song from it's a bad tune. Right. Sound man, we cut it on a dub plate. Right. And like, no, we sound man, I wait for the song. It. Mm -hmm. Them and time it they the special. Mm -hmm. From it is special, it can go on a dub plate. And like, no, we a popular song man cut back. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, a man want a tune when nobody know of it. It mm -hmm. is special. So when him play it, it is special. Mm -hmm. So me have a little tune named Dub for Dub now. It start get a little buzz now and sounds from foreign start send down the name and dub plate list now and they start to see a name coming and they listen in the office them wondering who is this new because he has no hit song <laughs> but sound a requesting name a foreign <laughs> so them find out says some little interest about this little one mm -hmm. so it was the engineer and printer who really give me the general rhythm to record and then i record copper shot for jammies right and then Jammies never really want the gun song thing because the mm -hmm. time the gun thing was getting a pressure because radio started yeah. to censor. censor. Mm -hmm. So it was clean song producer start requesting. Right. So my song never really should have come out. Mm -hmm. So it was mixed but it never released in Jamaica because Jammies did say the song bad but him want a 
clean song. Right, right. So me should have scheduled for voiceover, but show me and I'm a big artist and most of the rhythm release and mix are ready. The engineer them never really gave me the privilege to record again. It was Goody Goody, a song named Miss Goody Goody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Miss Goody Goody, mm -hmm. woman you in a class. Galaxy P and Colin wrote song that came out on the general rhythm, but it came out after, mm. in the last. So my song end up on the same tape. Ah. And that cassette, that's what they call it. Them time they, they send it over, cease to release. Mm -hmm. Then Johnny Wonder now. He didn't know what Jamie said about releasing of guns and or nothing. He just know that that come with Miss Goody Goody and Copper Shot. Mm -hmm. And he missing the two of them and two good songs. Mm -hmm. And then now, New York is different from Jamaica. That's Gun right. thing, everything played on the radio. So, <laughs> censor wasn't the problem in New York. Yeah. So, Johnny Wanda ended up releasing Miss Goody Goody on a 12 inch, well, look like a record, but it's a big one, the yeah, bigger record. Yeah, yeah. With two songs on each side Miss Goody Goody and the version, then Copper Shot and the version, so it end up come out and Miss Goody Goody, which is a big song. Aye. So people buy Miss Goody Goody and then you flip it, it and listen over. what's on the other side mm -hmm. and then they hear Copper Shot and they like it and they start to play Copper Shot. So Copper Shot took off in New York. Mm -hmm. That's where my buzz started really first. I had a little dub for dub something I go on here. out your butt. Mm -hmm. It wasn't any big thing, it was just a sound clash on them. Mm -hmm. Copper Shot was the real effect, but it took off in New York City first. So that's why I have a real huge following in New York, yeah. especially Brooklyn. Because mm -hmm. that's where my first anthem burst. Mm -hmm. And then now when Kappa Shot busts in New York, Jam is just released to Jamaica now can realize this thing gone already. Mm -hmm. you. And, and from there they don't really tell me what to record now. I know. Record spy for that. give you creative people freedom then, now. Yeah, it, it does allow it can realize that well people want this type of music. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then it busts beyond radio play in Jamaica. I have a question for you. What do you think made that song connect with the way it connect? Which so I know one? them understand them saying, you know, keep the thing clean, but there's a reason it connected the way it connected Copper Shot. Why do you think it connect with it connect? Well, it's a rude boy anthem, and then now, you see, Copper Shot, it was a sentimental reason why I met that song, you know. Mm -hmm. I got shot when I was 16 years old. 16? Really? Yeah, as a juvenile, and that's how I end up making the song name. From a man back him gun, you feel run. Kappa shot. Remember me telling her just that it was really an experience I made that song from. And then that song ended up combust me. What was that experience when you were 16? It was cruel. It was me you now trying to be a gangster, you know? Uh, Growing up in the ghetto, you think so you have to be a gangster. That's how uh, the tradition did seem, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was a wannabe gangster and follow a bad company and I run at the wrong crew. And you decided that now go yeah. work with you. And then now. Uh, and I mean, nobody come to kill nobody, but I get shot in a crossfire because mm. they were fire off of the crew where I power with. So, mm -hmm. everybody over there say, anyway, yeah. So, that's how I end up making the song Kappa Shot. It was for so a you, personal So, you're talking experience. your truth. So yeah. So, how, how much of your music you feel like has connected because you say, yo, this is my life, I'm going to pour it out in the music. You think that's a big part of why your music connects? Yeah, most of my music is definitely not, if it's not my experiences. Our experiences, things that happening and in and around us, mm -hmm. and that's how I try to make music. Things where people yeah. can relate to, yeah. instead of just imagine it. Mm -hmm. Things where you can rest your hands on and say, mm -hmm. "Yes, I experience that hands on." You know, so my thing is realness, mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. That's what keep my songs in. That's why when I said poor people fed up today. It's still relevant. Not sure. And as you see mm -hmm. in the Black Lives Matter, people even mm -hmm. refer to the song the same way. I, I saw that. Because yeah. frustration is something that yeah. in a lot of us lives. Mm -hmm. You understand? As you see, poverty is something that got to tradition, it transcend. Because mm -hmm. we as the the older price now might grow tight, but the younger price they don't have much mm -hmm. if we don't set it for them. So it's like these things come down in tradition, so they never go away. You know what's funny though, you mentioned tradition and the younger generation. One thing you are notorious for is bringing other artists with you. You're not a greedy man. You don't say, let me eat all of the food and no, nobody not eat no food. No, if you see me, me over life, but <laughs> I have an eating disorder. <laughs> Ask my family, I, I, I have a problem with eating too much. And if you put too much on my plate, You're not I'm it. turned off. Really? You can't put too much on my plate. 
I'm not a foodie. Really? I'm a person who uh, eats when can it's live. necessary. Because guess what? <laughs> me would have eat the food. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody can eat all the food. They know my thing. But fun and joke aside, you are, it's one of the things that everybody give you the most Yeah, but it's something that is a, is, a, is a tradition as again. I mm. told you, you know, because Dan Demite was the man who encouraged me to come to studio. Right. Encouragement is a strong thing because that's what lead me to this greatness. So. Mm -hmm. I always try to give it back, so that's mm -hmm. how I end up started helping artists because I've done the mic. Because when I burst now, I decide my friend mm -hmm. will encourage me if he come at the studio, mm -hmm. if him not boss, me done with music. Mm -hmm. So that's how scared them could really end up boss. Right. All because I'm fighting to boss Dan the Might, and mm -hmm. then there was really a crew of us. Right. And then if Dan the Might had a boss, we had as well everybody boss. Mm -hmm. So that's how we grew up and turned a crew. It wasn't really a crew, you know. Ah. It was just a group of us. And then it was hard to get on. So we just make everybody be a crew and get on one track. Mm -hmm. That's all them boss. And then that's why it's everybody disintegrate and go them other way because okay. it wasn't really a crew. Okay. It's just group to group up and do something. Mm -hmm. So that's how I end up bringing other artists because I know that artist didn't encourage me to right. go to the studio. So it's just a one and watch the other situation. Right, so you send back down the elevator. Yeah, one can't be at the top. After that, no other people start to reach out to me because they think it's something that I really look forward to do and mm -hmm. then it was a nice thing to do mm -hmm. to bring others and help others and it feel good and then we start by with baby sham and then mm -hmm. bling dog and Wayne Marshall and then mm -hmm. vibes cartel mm -hmm. busy signal Mavad and we just become this mentor school I don't but know Rodney, but I never plan it I don't know if you realize but you just listed almost Three quarter of dance hall, no? Of three quarter of dance hall, biggest there. name. Yeah. Oh, you didn't stop there. Keep going then. No, but we don't have to keep going. No, no, they, no. they know the history. <laughs> we don't have to release everybody that we really give the platform, but it's that a public a, knowledge. That's fantastic, though, eh? Yeah, because it's something I take as my social development, yes. you know? Helping yes. back the communities and the ghetto youths and the people them who were there around me. And it's my giving back. That's why I never really try to sign artists. People always say, oh, you don't sign them. This is not a business for me. This is right. just my interest. It's bound to kill the poor people's governor. Right. So this is how you make treasure and richness and all yes. these things spread in the ghetto. A word. So it's not like what I do, it don't value all of this, but I don't want the value of it. I just want the goodness of it. Mm -hmm. And then now if I do it for a fee, I could not really brag about it. Right. Like I'm doing anything out of the way for nobody because it would be business. Right. I'm doing it for just the pleasure, not for, not for the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what I do to give back my country and my mm -hmm. communities. Helping talented youths, mm -hmm. taking them out the street and changing them life and just yeah. impact people across the world. That's what we all should do. Everybody from the ghetto should have an interest of giving back and helping back someone if you yeah. have any interest of the country and the state mm -hmm. and we always curse the system mm. so when you become a platform or a character or a personality that can make a difference mm. you should because mm. you always talk about the indifferences and you know make no difference mm. so i make sure I make a, a difference word. you always are talk about the indifferences and you are not making a difference yeah. that is a word that is a big word let's talk about your mother yeah and i'm going to go there because I know you lost your mom. Yeah, God blesses her soul. But I also know that you love your mother differently. Yeah, man. Anybody who knows about your know mother. Mama Ivy are the boss. All right, Mama Ivy. Let us talk about Mama Ivy Mama and Ivy how is the loss changed girl. you. Well, the loss has done a lot for me because not having my mother around, I'm not that secured. Because my mother was my prior warrior, she was my greatest advisor, you know? Mm. And then you know, there was a lot of things that my mother wanted to see me do. Mm. So I have to make a lot of adjustments. Right. And then not having her around, I don't want to feel like, okay, because she's not here in flesh, I deceive her and mm. gonna do the things that she wouldn't want to see, you know? Right. The fact that she's not here now, we even more bound to do the things. You understand that my mother, she always wanted me to do good things and she wanted me to be Rodney. Yeah. Don't play that bounty killer thing off stage, you know? Ah. Yeah, so my mother is a woman who rule with love. She's a stern mother, but she's not an arrogant person. Mm. She rule with the pen mm. than the sword, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So she used love instead of my father, where he used the mighty mm. arrogance and mm. enforce the love. But my mother, she made the love spread across. She made the whole eater we feel loved, mm. like we are the number one. Men don't know how she do it. Right. Even when we know she have a number one, because my big brother was really our number one. <laughs> he get her with the most things. Although he had the bigger one, so he would end up having to do the most things. But right, right. We always think that she loved Bali more than the whole away. But I show him do the most and get away the most. We are look on it so, but we mm -hmm. do things too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Mama is one of the great mom in the world. Where if anybody have a mother like me, they would be grateful and thankful. Mm. When you say you say something really poignant a while ago, you say, Mama Ivy used to you, be Rodney, here so and not Bounty Killer in private. Yeah, in What's life. What's the differentiation between Rodney yeah. and Bounty? Well, that's what's happening now, why people are bound to change. Because hmm. I'm not walking in character. Ah. You understand? Because hmm. that's why you stand to you when you burst and you become bounty killer. You love it more than bounty hunter. Ah. Or Rodney, because what you know, nobody never used to talk about Rodney. But this bounty hunter and this bounty killer thing make everybody excited. So mm -hmm. you liking this bounty killer thing too. Mm -hmm. And I become a fan of it. Mm -hmm. When is that? The people it should be pleasing and then you might go home and be bounty like, oh, them not treat me like star with your family. And that's not ah. right. You, when you go home, you're supposed to be Rodney. Right. Because my family don't call me bounty. Nobody never say bounty. They might say Rodney, Rodney. cause and the Rodney thing don't come across when them see you. Right. You go back in yourself. Right. But being in the bounty character now, it used to make you have to cross on the misery because so bounty have to go on. Ah. <laughs> and that's why it's like a bounty going nice in my bounty today. So that's what we used to play in our head like we are the person there when it's just an image with a mm -hmm. portrait. Mm -hmm. So we used to all live the image. And people used to just see you like the person now. Right. So that's how people used to see killer. The man they always hungry misery because you used to be in character too much. Ah. So he's learn, we learn, say, so well, Bounty is a job, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you come home, you're not there on the job. Mm -hmm. So that Bounty thing they're not required right now. You understand? So mm -hmm. that's the difference now we can put the character aside and be the person who he is. Yes. And that most artists now learn. It's so funny. I think that is one of the most profound things I have heard since I've sat here in this seat. And I'm not kidding you. I don't have a reason <laughs> for You understand? And let me tell you why I said that. Because there are so many decisions that people make under the guise of their persona because of ego. Yeah. Right? And growth and learning and improving and bettering yourself is understanding how damaging and destructive that is to your personal life. True. How damaging and destructive it is to your yeah. relationships, your, your personal relationships, how you raise your children, because it's not one and the same. Yeah, it's true, because I used to be that arrogant, cross, angry, yes. miserable. Because I think that's what the people like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it wasn't necessary every time, because when you're off stage, that's not what people really want to see. People want to see the person now. And then you just yeah. are feeding away you think people like. And you have people who want to see the person and not the artist. And it's not what your partner needs, yeah. your mother, your child need, or your children need. Yeah, so yeah. it's a great thing to learn that. And then at mm. 48, if I could be the bounty killer at 48, it would be such a great man. Because mm. if you have this knowledge and this experience, yes. I'm bursting as bounty killer now. Yes. I would just be a genius because I would make a mistake. Right. But so it's a mistake where you grow too. Yeah, right? it, the mistakes and the consequences that taught right. you a lot too. Right. So you needed those to keep you stern. Because if you just think everything was just all dandy and jolly, you would just start make jolly move and get giddy. <laughs> yeah, but you be careful now because you know you have to stay on track. You have to stay on point because right. if you fall off, this and that might happen. Hey, growth is a beautiful thing, and you know. the most beautiful thing. It really is. I wish I could have just born and grow quick like this. Mm -hmm. I wish I never have to come to 48, to, uh, 48 years and To knowledge. understand that. But here, what? Is the journey. Is the, the journey. Right? Yeah. And here now, so the thing is now, when you talk now, you know, you're not just talking from a place where, no, man, me just a talk, say no, you say no, you, you me live this. It's you know, in depth, yeah. Me live this, and me I tell you, it no makes sense. Sort out the thing. The two, yeah. the two things are different things. You have to rate your personal thing different. You yeah. can't... You're speaking from a place of experience. True, that's what I learned. Yeah. Yeah, man. So that's the part of where I'm at now. Yeah. Just being me and just yeah. differentiating the artist from the person. Mm. 
Mm. And it's very important to do that. I see why you say mama rule with the pen. She's a wise woman. Yeah, because you will destroy yourself because you can't make the artist destroy the person because once an artist, twice a person, you know. Yeah. As the, the flashy light and the star, them are going to go one day and you have to live back with yourself. Oh, so you have to prepare for being normal again. Oh, so normal is so something where you have to practice. Oh, word. Don't become alienated. What for you is the biggest highlight of your career? What's the thing where you look at it and you say, <laughs> Yo! That well, would everybody be, you know? would say the Super Bowl appearance with no doubt. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think that was the biggest is highlight. For you the one highlight, yeah. When we could go two now, we can go three and four and five, you know, because your career is that big. <laughs> well, that was the most memorable for you. moment of my career. Yeah. One of the biggest ones. We did some other nice things, but that was the greatest one. Yeah. And then we won the two Moonman Award on mm -hmm. MTV. That was normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a big one because no normal Jamaican artist in normal you have that is like Shaggy and Sean Paul alone get those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the No Doubt moment was one of the greatest moments for me because it way out of even my genre. It wasn't dancehall or reggae, it was pop. Mm -hmm. And that year I was nominated twice in two separate categories in right. 2002 in the reggae for get a dictionary yes and in the pop category with a hey baby mm -hmm. so that was the greatest moment to be nominated twice on the grammys Amazing. another jamaican artist has never nominated in two categories once Amazing. yeah Amazing. so i would say the a hey baby moment and the no doubt collaboration was that highlight I don't use the word regret, but if there is one thing that you look back on and you say, boy, I really could have avoided that part of my life. I really could have done that better and that different. What is the one thing that you really wish you could have done differently? Mm, well, I wouldn't say I have no regret. And as you said, our mistakes are our lesson and blessing. Yes. So I, I wouldn't see anything that I've done musically or in my career mm -hmm. where I would done different. Enough things could have done different, but what is to be has to be. Aye. However, it was done, yes. that's how it should be done. Yeah. Despite if I'm pleased or not. Right. That's just the life and the journey of reality. Yeah. So I'm happy with myself. Mm -hmm. Everything that we've been through is what made me who I am today. So yeah. I'm happy with me today. So I'm happy with all my mistakes and all my blessings and lessons. I would say. Where you see yourself going from here? You still want. Going on the music, yeah, you man. Say. Still have the drive, man. Yeah, man. Me have anchor leg for them. You can't give them another decade. <laughs> yeah, I have man. that drive. Maybe I find next decade, me find different interests. You go look for my grandparents, them now, my family. Them. But <laughs> to a music, they know it mm -hmm. still need my support and my advice I and agree. my guide. I agree. Because it's still not in a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. They are searching for a place. Yes. They are searching for a sound, but yes. we still not find one because trap dance out can't be our sound because we now go we use no vandalizing sound. We have to come up just like how we did have Skia mm -hmm. and then we go reggae and mm -hmm. it's ours. And then we leave reggae and we go to dance hall, step up music mm -hmm. and it's ours. We are gonna leave dance hall and go to something and it's gonna be ours. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be something Taking from somewhere, mm -hmm. trying to make you know, something like we confuse. No, we could take our time. Yeah. Still, we do we have till we find something where it makes sense. But yeah. we're not taking nothing or anything for something. Mm -hmm. But I'm in a good place and I just want to get to go do the music again. Yeah. I'm just trying to stay safe and taking care of the family. Yeah. But music is always my drive. So I'm working on an album also. Oh. After 18 years, the last album was yes. Get a Dictionary, that's from 2002. So I'm working on an upcoming album. Looking forward to that. But I have no plans of releasing it right. because I don't want to make music and put it out in pandemic when I have to stay inside right. and ask people how they feel. I want to go feel how they feel mm. and see how they feel. Feel them energy. So I don't want to really put out an album where we can't go do no interaction or no gathering or no performance. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to feel my album. I just don't want the seal alone. Mm -hmm. I want the vibration. Mm. And that's how we normally put out album. We go out and tour and we know if the album is making a big difference or an impact with the people. Yeah. And then online audience is different from live audience. The yes. virtual audience is a total different audience. Energy is a thing you can't deny. I have people who buy music and they love music, but they don't really go to concerts. Yeah. 
So it's a separate audience. Mm -hmm. So you have some people who go to concert and buy music, and some people who buy music go to concert, but not everybody who buy the music online or stream music goes to concert. So you can't take for them interest alone. We want live interaction. Mm -hmm. So until live interaction, me not think some music active. Mm. You understand? Because I, I listen to music, I feel music, yes. I see music. Yes. So I can't just listen to it and go and feel it. I want to see the music and no music is not visual. What's yeah. the greatest lesson of your career? That no artist is never fully developed. Mm. Whoa, what a good one. You're never fully developed. You're well developed or you're so developed, but <laughs> what is fully? Mm. Music is like education. You never know everything. There's no number on like 1.2 million lessons in the world of education and you seal it. Right. No. How much lesson in the world of education? Right. Numerous. Yes. And how Endless. much lesson in the, the, the world of music? Numerous. Mm -hmm. So that's how I think. Mm -hmm. My greatest lesson is to know that you are never fully developed as an artist. You are as good as you could be, mm. not as can be. Because I used to try to be as good as I can be. And then Dave Kelly teach me that you are as good as you could be. Mm. So it's when you come out of yourself, you can be more than you can be. So you have this no style. When you're good at it, you can be greater. Mm. I guess that's why I reach this stage and yes. people say you're a legend and you're great and all these things because we never think we fully learn or fully develop. Yes. Always have a quest of going higher and further. Yes, yes. And that's how I think. Mm. I guess that's why at 48 I can DJ so good and I'm still vibrant and I'm still interactive with mm. the crowd and commanding when I go on the stage because I'm still learning. Yes. And I'm still in choose when I'm on the stage. I, I never, all right, when I go on stage, when we was a young artist, you used to nervous for the people love. Like, I wonder if they're going to love me. Yes. Now, I'm sure that the people love me. You know me, nervous, so when I go up on stage, Tell me. for not deliver to the people them now. Mm. The problem is to not messing up. Right. Is not to worry about the response. Mm. Is you are the problem now. Because remember, you are a legend. Right. You don't know people love you, Bounty Killer. Mm -hmm. I know how much people love me. Mm. So when you go on stage now, the problem is to not do anything that the people don't love. Right. Right. So it's a different nerves for me than a, a young artist. He may worry if the people are going to love him. Mm -hmm. Me I worry if me are going to lose the people love. Because you don't want to give them no insipid bitterness or mm. distasteful thing on stage. Right. Like mm. go on it and act out a character and say the wrong thing like what we would do back in the days. Right. One time we would go up and cuss and go on anything. Now me have to think different. Mm. Because them time, I never know how much people rate me, how much people love me. I just know some people that love me. Mm -hmm. But now, people express it over and over and over and tell you how much you mean to them and how much people look up to you and mm -hmm. when you do what the impact it might be. So, that's my nerves when I'm going on stage now. Stay in character. Make sure you don't lose it. Mm -hmm. Don't disappoint the people. Mm -hmm. So, it's make sure me deliver and don't do anything disappointing. Mm -hmm. As a big artist, me still have a nerves when me go and say, me not say, the general man, I ain't think me do them off, so I'm here on the thing. No. Right. I'm still going on stage and thinking you can't mess up in a boy. You better do the right thing, you know. Mm. So you rip him on yourself when you go up there, you don't just up there going like, me not think me do them off, you accept me. Just mm. give them some mediocre thing. That's why you see some artists go and do do what I do. Yes. No, when we go up on stage, you, you, that's why you see that collective move thing it match with the way you do last week because it's it stays and you want mm -hmm. and rip a man and keep that in your head and discipline yourself. So you always have to do that, boy. Mm. So that's why performance looks similar because you make sure you lock it to the last one mm -hmm. and try to even make it and better. Master it. Mm. That's how my head works. I mean, yeah. you know, also my artists look on it, but me always look like when I go work, I want to win somebody. Right. Instead of thinking complacent, like, me have them people a lot, man. Mm -hmm. No. Mm. Me always go up there, I think say, somebody in a, in a you, somebody in a rate you, somebody in a feel your impact. Mm -hmm. So me have to go hard. <laughs> and then David Radigan taught me one time that when I'm playing killer, I look for the one person, that one girl, that one guy that's just not in the vibes, mm -hmm. not into it. 
even when the club is pumping you have one or two few people might still not there yeah when i met that person I get it. in the motion mm -hmm. the club is ready mm -hmm. So the man tell me, say, if 100 people in the club and 95 into it and five not into it, the club is not ready. In focusing on the, I go get the five. When I tell you, say, the whole audience make mm -hmm. up the whole impact. Mm -hmm. If you only reach in a part of the audience, you don't have it locked. Mm -hmm. So that's all. When I'm going to see, I'm thinking about Devo. Once somebody in there, when I into your vibes, and you have to go get them into it. So you have to yes. do it on point. Yes. Because... 95% people rate you, know what you do, and they have you as the God, and then 5% don't. And you have to convince them tonight. Yeah. There is always 5% to be convinced. Mm. So you're never supposed to be less than the expectation. Mm -hmm. When this whole thing is said and done, what do you want Rodney's legacy to be? Well, Rodney's legacy. Mm. Well, I just want people to remember me as a great artist and one of them good men who walk the earth, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm an extraordinary tycho. But just want to put up side of the good names. Yeah. You understand? Yes. I want to be looked upon as a dancer and Mandela. Aye. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, the dancer and Mandela, not the dancer and Bob Marley, no. Yeah. Mandela put up the struggle and the fight. Bob sent the message, but the struggle and the sacrifice that Mandela made for mm -hmm. Africa and black people across the world. Mm -hmm. That's the type of sacrifice I made for dancehall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just want to look up and as a dancehall Mandela. Yeah, the same struggle that he been through for the black folks. That's the struggle I've been through for dancehall. I love that. Yeah, that's a noble person. I love that. And that's why I do all the goodness I do without wanting any reward. Right. Because love and respect is the biggest reward. Mm. The one that you cannot take back. Mm -hmm. If you say you love me today, you can't take it back. You only can't say you don't love me, but you already gave me your love in the universe. Mm. And if you respect me, you only can deny it, but it's there. Yeah. You can't take it back. Yeah. And the most important currency, love and respect. Because the key way you have, if you don't have love and respect, you feel all right, if, if I go outside and the little, the little man where I sell on the roadside or the man where I sleep out there, so no respect me, me feel away. Mm. Respect does something to you. Yeah. All when I don't know, body now respect you, you feel away. Yeah. And then that little regular man, they no respect me. It shouldn't make me feel no way. I saw respect important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All nobody respect is important. Mm -hmm. So I just want love and respect. And then people, Over the world, pray for me, and then, and every time I get to pray for myself, so I love the good, and then in other little people, them prayer. Mm. And then I think God hear poor people prayer more than a man who's fortunate. Mm. So, more time you go down, send out my wave, and God not pick it up yet, because I'm a check on the people, them don't, and I get to some love, God, they're going to give us something. That's why we have the foundation, and we just want in the prayer of the poor. Because I'm not poor no more and just in a rich man now coming in the kingdom. You know, so I'm going to go into the poor prayer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some poor people bless you can't come over my way. So you can't rich people down and bless you out there. And then I look for the money. I tell you one thing though. You don't take your riches for granted. You give back. And that's a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> when you give back, you receive tenfold. Yeah, yeah. but that's all you receive by giving. Yeah. You understand? You can't receive by receiving. Right. You understand? So if you receive God's blessing, I receive God's blessing, I receive God's blessing. Now you just want to receive God's blessing. You have a poor And then no, you have to make blessing show. God blessing for multiply. Yeah. If God bless me so much, it's supposed to have blessed some other people. Blessing for your flow off of me. Anybody will come around me supposed to get blessed. Well, that's how it all is. Line up for the blessing. <laughs> yeah. To me, every come around It's a blessed <laughs> space. Exactly. That's yeah. how it goes. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that walk it, not in the council of the ungodly. So if people come around the godly, they're supposed to get blessed. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see people come around me and everybody turn star and everybody come celebrity cars. That's how we do it. Everybody's supposed to be blessed. And I don't want everything mm -hmm. to who much is given, much is expected of. Yeah. So we have much, so we do much with the much. You can't have this much and not doing much. You know, look, balance. Yeah. So I try to do as much as I can, even the little I have. It's 10 years now I'm stuck in Jamaica. I haven't been to the U.S. Mm. But that don't really stop me from doing some little things. 
mm. or could be or want to do more, but not at the moment. But me can't give away a dollar. Me give it away if me can't assist somebody, me still assist them. Because a little for me is a lot for some people. Yes. You yes. understand? When yes. me take up 50 grand, when me could have go spend now one party at one club and give someone that can change them life. life. Then can go turn it in a business. Yeah. Then can go pay mortgage with it. Yes. Then can do whole heap of important essential things with it. Yeah. So we know wait till we have 500,000 or 5 million. Mm. We give away 5 grand, we give away 50 grand, we give away whatever you can mm. afford. And this giving is the thing. And how much? Yeah. And the receiver knows that. Yeah. And it's not much giver. Yes. So as little as you have to give, everybody will get it, appreciate it much. Yes. Besides, it taught us those little things, you know? So yes, I think of the blessing of God. Mm. Carry we this far with being through so much struggle, losing my mother, losing my visa, stuck mm. in Jamaica, then mm. Corona come, cramp mm. in the entertainment industry. Yeah. We're going through so much at this time mm. and we're still alive and we're well. We're not the worst. Yeah. So we have to give thanks. Life is the greatest and we have that so we just have to stay safe and do the right thing. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You thanks so for having much. me. Life is a thing though. Life is a journey. Yeah. And it's one that's very colourful and life is never easy. Life is a struggle. Yeah. Yeah, life is no better rules and people have to know that. So when you have got you a struggle, there's no life that if you don't want to struggle, lie down and dead. Dead man, them now got you in a struggle in our, in our grave right now. Yeah. Yeah, so life is a journey and it's a big road with many signs. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that. Yeah. But when when you're dead, no, that's it. Uh, if you're in a line on the ground or lying in a hospital bed or lying in a jail cell, all is well. Aye. Mm -hmm. word. At the most three desperate situation. Yeah. When you're dead or you're sick, are you in captive yeah. as a human being? If you are not in those three positions, you can do something about your life. A are word. the only three desperate positions where you might can help yourself. A word. Yeah, when you don't have no good health and you don't have no freedom, or you don't have no life. But with health and freedom and life, we should help ourselves. So those are my little Rodney Izzy man. Oh, Philosophy or outlook for life, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I love it. I could have listened to you tell a story for hours. <laughs> no, you tell a story nice. Listen to me, Miss Dano. I ain't no storyteller.